a mother plays with her little boy's toys. A son she was accused of killing nearly two decades ago. Police say they have the real killer in custody now. Tonight, she shares her incredible story. Also on the news show, their relics from the World Trade Center and the planes that flew into them. Now they're headed across the country and to Arizona. And just how did this guy get stuck and why did police arrest him? The story coming up next. She was accused of killing her boy. Tonight, her name has been cleared with the arrest of a suspect in Utah. His name is Harley Spencer, and he's at the heart of an investigation dating back to 1983. The year six-year-old Adam Clark's life came to a brutal end. The boy was handicapped and weighed only 22 pounds. Spencer was babysitting Adam Clark the night of his death. Reports released today show that Adam's liver literally exploded as a result of blunt force trauma. Adam, doctors later said, suffered severe trauma to the liver and the brain. Prosecutors originally charged his mother with the crime, saying she beat the boy, then dropped him off at Spencer's apartment. But evidence uncovered in the past few years shows the type of injuries Adam suffered would have caused him to bleed in less than 30 minutes. This time frame, according to investigators, meant Clark could not have killed her son. After reopening the case, they concluded that Harley Spencer caused Adam's injuries. Today, he was arrested outside of Salt Lake City. Harley Spencer now faces second-degree murder charges in the death of Adam Clark. And what about Adam Clark's mother, the woman who lost everything after being accused of killing her son? She's not spoken publicly for 18 years. Tonight, she breaks her silence. Carrie Pena is here with more. Joyce Clark always believed that her son died of natural causes. That is until a detective called to say that new medical evidence had been uncovered evidence that would crack Adam's case wide open. Adam was special not just because he was handicapped, but Adam was special because he had a sweet little soul. He had a sweetness about him. In 1977, Joyce Clark gave birth to her second child, a boy who weighed into the world at only five pounds. His name was Adam. He um, was born with a condition called Cornelia de Long syndrome. Back in the 1970s, not a whole lot was known about it. There was just dire predictions. By society's standards, Adam was not perfect. Not like his older sister, Amber. She was born in good health, a beautiful little girl. Adam was born with a genetic condition similar to Down syndrome, only much more severe. Part of the Cornelia de Long syndrome is midgetism. He stayed very small, missing limbs. He only had one hand. He would never learn to walk. He would never learn to talk. Joyce Clark keeps a trunk full of Adam's things in her room, right by her bed. For her, opening this trunk is like opening an old wound. Clark remembers how doctors urged her to send Adam away, put him in a home, but she refused. She says Adam was a special gift. Everyone who met him became more compassionate, and they developed more empathy, and they learned that this little soul was a gift from God. For six years, Adam Clark defied the odds, surpassing all medical predictions. Mm -hmm. And while these were not easy times, this young mother was doing what she could for her two children. She was on welfare and had just started nursing school. This was in 1983, the year Joyce Clark's life would change forever. Adam had come down with an infectious skin disorder. Joyce Clark says because of that, she could not drop him off at his regular child care center. Clark says missing two nursing classes was cause for expulsion, and she had already missed one. In a bind, she made arrangements to drop Adam off at a friend's house, a friend by the name of Jean Colombaro. I had no reason to believe he wouldn't protect my child. I left Adam with him so I could go to class. That was the last time she would see her child alive. 
Joy says soon after leaving Columbaro's Glendale apartment, he called to say that Adam was having trouble breathing. For the first time in 18 years, Joyce Clark speaks publicly about what happened next, starting with what she said to Columbaro on the phone. Call 911. Don't wait until I get there. Call 911. So I immediately got into my car, drove back to where Adam was, probably a time frame of about 40 minutes or so. I grabbed Adam from him. I turned him over and I saw that he was bleeding or there was something coming from his mouth and all I could think of was, my son, I've got to save my son. So I turned him over and I started performing CPR on him. Within minutes, emergency workers were on scene trying to revive the tiny six-year-old. He was rushed to Glendale Samaritan Hospital. And then someone came out and told me that Adam was dead. Joyce Clark could not believe her son was gone, but even more unbelievable was what would happen next. The young mother who refused to send her son away was about to be accused of killing him. I was charged with murdering my son. I, I, is even now saying that, I cannot fathom it. I, it doesn't seem real, and yet it, be, it was very real. Me? I was charged with murdering my child? The story was front page news. Soon, Joyce Clark lost her daughter, her house, her life. The autopsy said that Adam sustained blows to the head, which caused swelling in the brain. The autopsy said that Adam sustained a slit liver. One of the problems with CPR is sometimes it can cause damage, and sometimes that damage can be a slit liver. Joyce Clark thought the injuries were consistent with natural causes resulting from Adam's disorder. But prosecutors thought she beat her son, then dropped him off to die. She was indicted by a grand jury, and while charges were eventually dropped, Clark says she was branded with a scarlet letter. The scarlet letter. This woman was innocent, but on her chest she had to wear a red letter A. Well, on my chest I had to wear a letter of M. I was accused of murdering my child. For years, Joyce Clark shoes. says she has lived in shame, wondering who might find out that she was once accused of murdering her son. 18 years passed, 18 years of believing her son died of natural causes. And then recently, she received a phone call. When I was told that Adam's case was reopened, fear, a fear so tangible I could feel it came over me. I thought, no, they're going to come after me again. But Joyce Clark would soon learn Glendale police were not after her. This time they were after the man she thought was her friend, the man who volunteered to watch Adam that night in 1983, Gene Columbaro, who now goes by Harley Spencer. He hit Adam so hard he smashed his liver against his spinal column tore his intestines to pieces, and Adam bled to death. These were the, the facts fact as told to her by Adam investigators. They had uncovered new evidence in this case, and they were about to make an arrest. It all came as a shock to this mother who had since remarried and had two more kids. She says after the fear subsided, she realized it was time to open the trunk, open those old wounds and perhaps finally remove that scarlet letter she has tried to hide for so long. People ask me now, Joyce, how did you get through it? And I can really say I got through it because I knew I was innocent, I knew I was the best mother I could possibly be, and I had God on my side. Detectives tell us through this investigation they have uncovered evidence that shows Harley Spencer has throughout the years allegedly abused many women and children and they believe there are more victims out there. Joyce Clark hopes the arrest in this case will help her repair that damaged relationship that she has with her daughter Amber who is now 29 years old. Does she talk to Amber? Very rarely. All right, Carrie, thanks very much for the story. Authorities have taken extra steps to...